Hey everybody, this is DM Mike, and this is the next campaign diary for Doip. Let's go ahead and put some statistics up from session four. The one with better prep is what I called it. <laughs> Even though I, I, I prep very, very well for my campaigns. Uh, and session three actually turned out to be a blast. Uh, I just kind of felt, um, you know, a little ill-prepared with the direction they went uh, unexpectedly. But it was all actually a lot of fun. So here's some stats here you can see. a lot, Not a lot of natural 20s or natural ones. Plenty of bad jokes as usual. Um, and uh, a lot of near-death experiences. I don't think I put this up here or not, but, you know, there were a lot of near-death experiences. The dice, again, even though there were very few 20s and 1s, changed the outcome of the entire game for two and a half hours. So let's look at the map here to figure out where they were and what exactly just happened. You can see here, this is where we left off in Axholm. Uh, they had uh, just fought off the ghouls, so they went ahead and decided to scout the lower locations, didn't come across anything else, and decided to take the, the uh, staircase to the bottom right. Which, of course, if you're running the campaign, you're the DM behind the screen, you've got the map in front of you, you realize, hey, that's right in the path of the Banshee. And more ghouls. So they went up the stairs, they were very cautious, very stealthy, we did some stealth checks. Hey. Everybody did great. They came around the corner and they heard the first set of ghouls in that left room there. Uh, I think it's like the um, Dwarven Bath or something like that. Well, in there's about six ghouls. Depending on your party size, I had about six or seven. I think it's like six ghouls in there. And they could hear them. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, they, 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 they weren't prepared, didn't know what they were about to walk into. Well, the, the, the little guy, uh, Glim, cast his dog, who was just kind of like this familiar, and uh, or apparition, and walks over there to see if he can kind of scout it out, right? So the dog did a stealth check. I don't know, I've never met a very stealthy dog before. But the dog did a stealth check and failed, made some noise, and of course this attracted the ghouls right out of the room, right? Now, in the last campaign, the last session, I should say, they had a way of funneling these ghouls through a single door, but here they're on a staircase. And of course there is a door there, but things did not turn out the same way they did last time. If you're running the campaign as a DM, you know the ghouls have many methods to get around Axahome, and there were two methods available to them in that room. First was the door, which a few of them did come out, but because they were clogging the door, the other three ghouls decided to take a very different route, which was the chimney. They could climb up and down the chimneys inside Axahome, and in doing so, they ended up flanking the characters. And this is my friends, is when hilarity and nail-biting tension occurred for the next two and a half hours because they were doing okay. They were doing okay with the ghouls because they were trying to come out a single door, right? Well, they noticed that some of the ghouls had disappeared. They didn't know like why the tokens weren't there anymore uh, because, you know, you can't hide everything <laughs> while you're moving tokens around. When a token disappears, you kind of notice it. So they were getting a little nervous about that. Well, they were doing okay with the ghouls until I flanked them. Up from the stairs come three ghouls and completely box them in. And this is where great plans were made and great plans failed spectacularly. This was a near TPK about three separate times, probably more than that because I just, I mean, maybe I should have counted that night how many times I almost killed everybody. Uh, not my intentions, of course, as a DM, but I, you know, really played these enemies to the letter, and I think I've learned a lot by, you know, playing Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat. I just think maneuverability and thinking outside of the box sometimes with, with enemies is, I'm getting better at that. Uh, and I think that night kind of showed, uh, if I may toot a little tiny DM horn for a moment. But yes, there were near-death experiences. We had several characters doing their death-saving throws, including one person who didn't make it that night. And man, I really wish she would have been there because, uh, God, it would have been a crazy experience for her. I mean, it's just, I really thought I was going to kill everybody. Um, I don't know how many times I turned those tokens red to symbolize they had dropped and were down to zero hit points. Now, of course, they were killing the ghouls, but the ghouls had just boxed them in. And it takes now two or three hits to really bring a ghoul down. And that's if you're successful at hitting them with, you know, at least max damage. Well, because they're going back and forth now and they're dealing with the ghouls, a second thing happened, right? They're making so much noise that they attract the Banshee. Now the Banshee is coming in about round three, I think round three or four of the encounter, now begins to enter the fray. And the only reason why they knew this was that Glim, after they had uh, got boxed in by the ghouls, uh, used the spell, I think Misty Step, got out of that situation and went all the way down the opposite end of the hallway. But when he materialized, he looked to his right because his hair on his arms just kind of suddenly stood up everywhere. And here comes this beautiful banshee down the corridor directly at him. And of course, this is where it just, things even got worse. It was a comedy of errors, really. 
comedy of good ideas, but a comedy of errors, really because of the dice, not because everybody had anybody had bad ideas, but the dice were just popping in at crucial moments. They were just trying to get out of there. And I don't know how many times people dash to get out of there, go there 60 feet, running away, trying to get down to the lower halls, and someone on the second floor would drop, causing everybody to stop running and dash again back to the same situation over and over and over again because they were trying to execute plans that were actually really, really good, but they would fail because either somebody would roll a terrible roll or I would be just rolling natural 20s and just knocking people left and right. It was really kind of nail biting, to be honest. And it was probably one, I say over this past year, one of the uh, one of the best encounters we've had because of the amount of risk involved and the amount of death that was going on and the amount of 20s that were being rolled at crucial moments. I mean, it's just, you can't, you can't plan these things as a DM. It's the dice and player decision that just kind of make all this stuff happen. And it was really just amazing. Well, the Banshee did her business. Uh, she really changed the scope of the battlefield and uh, really caused some significant damage. She does have a power called Whale, which really would have most likely destroyed everybody. It would have just dropped everybody and the tail probably would have ended. Matter of fact, I was going to use the power in the next round because I just felt like they were hanging on a little too long. And of course it was because people were dropping from other things. But if they kept harassing her, she was going to drop this significant power. And luckily they did get out. They finally were able to all be standing <laughs> at the same time and not be at zero hit points and dash out of there. And uh, I think actually what happened was William Art Knight was the last guy standing and he was really trying to help. He was trying to get everybody out of there and he would take many blows as he could. But he was the last one left on the staircase. He dropped to zero hit points. The Banshee said, OK, mission accomplished. Everybody's dead. So the, the Banshee just floated back down the hallway and then Glim secretly came back up, got him back to his feet and they ran out of there. Right. So uh, it was really by the skin of their teeth that they really survived these encounters. And if anything, two things happened there. I think two things were realized. We are underpowered and we are underleveled. If anything, I think resonated with the players that night. Those were the two issues. So they escape Axel home. They run outside into a huge thunderstorm, rain, wind, everything. It was just a terrible, terrible storm. And they just wanted to get back to Fanlin. They had just got their butts handed to them. They had zero spells, hardly any supplies, and I think maybe even no more healing potions left. Everything was exhausted and wiped out. Well, unfortunately, when they went to go get their horses, they saw out in the plains a huge, uh, I'd say a battalion or maybe just a small squad of orcs that were moving across the plain. There were about 30 of them, maybe 35, with scouts on the left, right, and front back ends of this this. Um, battalion that was moving through. They had to hide uh, from this group for like an hour waiting for them to pass while scouts were, you know, had actually come up towards Axholm because they saw it in the lightning. They didn't spot the heroes. They just kind of scouted real fast and kept moving on because they obviously have to keep up with the group that's moving through the plains. Well, after that passed, they were wanted to take a rest. Well, as a DM, I felt like, no, you're not going to be able to rest out here. It's not going to be restful rest. It's thunder, lightning, wind. It's really, really terrible out here. And you have like these canvas tents. It's not going to be a well night's rest. So they had to find some kind of cave or, or something out there to give them shelter. They went through. We kind of did this hex by hex on the map. They got to the second hex looking through the sword mountains there or the hills there, just trying to find a cave. They failed the first few five miles there. The second five miles, they managed to find something, got in there, spent overnight, got all their stuff back, got on their horses and went traveling back to Fandolin broken and uh, tired. And so that encounter at Axholm took about two and a half, maybe three hours. The last 30 minutes, we only played for like three and a half hours. Typically we play for five hours. Um, but the last bit of this was going back to Fandolin and really with kind of the tails between their legs in a, in a way, just um, after just an abysmal fight with the Banshee and the Ghouls. They did meet this new character, Nicodemus, a new character I've added. You know, it's not in the campaign. It's just something I wanted to add in there. Uh, so he was a new addition. They also went to talk to Wester to let him know what had happened. And Wester and them, were, of course, were excited, thinking that, oh, they've cleared Axholm. We could finally move in there if we need to. And, of course, they hadn't. Uh, but Axel, you know, they just told him again, look, you got to stay away from Axholm. It's the Banshee. Everything there is just going to kill you. We will find 
a new way to keep ourselves safe. We'll just find another mine to go to or something else. We could just write Axe home off. It seems like it's just going to be impossible. So Wester did give them the coins, uh, the, the reward for going to Dwarven Excavation. Also, uh, Abatha, Abatha uh, I don't know, the potion lady, she was there, and uh, she was upset too as well that they had actually gone to Axe Home. She was outraged by it. But she understood. She just felt like, you know, don't do it again. Don't be foolish and go there again. Well, while they're away, you know, she's brewing potions. I think this is important when players come back to Fandlin. There's something different going on, or there's a new stock of things. And so she had two new potions for them ready to go. The rest of the potions she had to give to the town. She still has to do her duty in helping with, you know, things that are going around in Fandlin. There are other things that are new that occurred there, but we didn't get to them because we kind of stopped the game a little short. And they kind of ended up trying to find Carson, the old sheriff here in my campaign, to let them know about the orcs and also to find out what happened in Nomengard. So that was Axholm. It was a, quite the experience. And regardless of my players being underpowered and underleveled, I actually had a really good time. And I think they did too. I think it was a very intense moment. And I think it's one we won't forget for a very long time. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. We play not this Friday, but the next. And uh, I, I don't know if they will go back to Axholm. I've got other things planned, of course, for the adventure. Uh, but that remains to be seen. Open box. You just never know what's going to happen. Or I guess I should say sandbox, not open box. Everything's open box, right? You got to open it to play with it. Uh, but sandbox, you just simply know, never know uh, what's going to happen. All right, guys, that's it. See you next one.